doing this live stream through a Bluetooth headset. So I'm not sure how it's going to come across to you. I haven't used Bluetooth very often. I want to address the occurrence of what uh, back in the day when I was a manager at a golf course where I had to manage 25 to 30 employees on a daily basis. I had to keep track of scheduling, uh, the hiring process, um, disciplinary actions and things like that. We had something we called a no-call, no-show. And that was when an employee just didn't show up for work and gave no forewarning, left no message on the answering machine, didn't text, nothing. They just didn't show up. That was called a no-call, no-show. I will experience this very same thing in the process of scheduling consultations and workshops for folks. So meaning, well, this is, happens more often with the consultations than it does with the workshops. Because with the workshops, people have put something into it. They've invested something in to uh, what we're doing, so therefore they're more liable to show up because they want to get a return on their investment. With the consultation, there, is no, there are no charges or fees, no donations, nothing necessary for a consultation, so people are more likely just to not show up. They don't feel bad about it, and they don't feel like they have to give notice or anything like that. So this is all part of the vetting process. Yes, of course, I could require a minimum donation gift for a consultation, but I won't. I know that I've seen that Mark Lord, Case Cake, Sean Christopher charges like 360 bucks for a consultation. For a brief consultation but I will never do that at least I have no plans of doing that I can see the validity in it though because if someone has to invest something in showing up they're more likely to show up definitely whereas if they invest nothing in it they don't they don't really care eh, so what now see for me it's a bigger deal because just like anybody else I'm you know busy and when I schedule these consultations I'm specifically setting aside blocks of now space for you folks if you want to talk to me if you want to apply for a workshop if you have correct sentence structure questions I literally set aside now space for that I'm not like doing stuff and then Randomly, oh, I got a consultation and then I give you a consultation while I'm mowing the lawn or something. No, I make sure I'm in a position where I can sit down and give my full concentration to you to ensure the quality of the communication so I'm not distracted. And I appreciate it when people do the same thing with me. I appreciate it when they're not like walking downtown or in a restaurant or a loud area. I appreciate when they actually invest something in it. Like make sure they're in a nice quiet spot and it's confidential. But that's not always the case. But I digress. So I'm going to get back to the point. The point of the no call, no show. In the vetting process, a great candidate to learn correct sentence structure actually get closure on it and to be able to actually use it in a practical manner is someone who can keep a schedule, who does keep their work, show up on time, and put effort into it. Those are the folks that have the best chance of succeeding and those are the folks that I want to teach. Folks that contact me and I go through the trouble 
not trouble. It's not really trouble. I go through the effort. I invest the energy in scheduling a consultation for you. And then they just don't show up. Um, and they do it more than once. And that tells me, oh, this individual probably does not possess the neurological pathways or the lifestyle stability to learn this grant. Now, the folks who actually send a donation and are scheduled for a workshop, and then those folks don't show up, that's different. That's like, whoa. Because I realize stuff happens. You know what I mean? Stuff comes up. Sometimes you're not able to send out a short email saying, hey, sorry, Jason, I can't make it today. And apologize. Some people can't, you know, they don't have the energy or the wherewithal to send out a short little message like that. So, I understand. But with workshops, it's different. Because now, you're in a contract. And in the contract, if you read the contract, if you contracted with me for a workshop, you will see that it says, if you cancel, then it's my choice whether to continue on with you or not. So if you cancel or you don't show up once, twice, at the max three times, then I might just break bulk with you. That's in the contract that you agreed to, by the way. But with consultations, there is no such written contract. It's just sort of a writ, uh, verbal, so to speak, contract. Hey, you want to do a 10 to 15 minute video consult at this time? Yes. Okay, cool. I'll send you the link shortly before the scheduled time. And then I will usually send the link out approximately an hour beforehand, before the scheduled time. And then we go from there. So there's a continuance of the evidence there. And if I get someone who no call, no shows, without even saying a word about it, that tells me a lot about that individual. And it tells me where on the scale of importance this particular scenario is to them. Because to me, I treat it like it, it's very important that I be there at that place, at that location, at that point in time. Some people might say, oh, you're making a big deal out of it. You know, it's just a consultation. Well, you add up five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 to 15 minute video consultations throughout the day. That's a pretty significant chunk in house space. Each one of those 10 to 15 minute slots could have been spent doing something else. Now, while I do not participate with the concept of wasted time, everything's a learning experience to me. I have to say that it does tell me a lot about the other individual, especially if they've done it more than once. And the reason why I'm saying this is because that exact thing happened today. And I look back through my records and I see that this individual does have a history of no call, no show. So while whether or not they are intelligent and they are a great student as far as they're advanced or intermediate with the grammar, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to teach them based upon the irregularity and inconsistency and their no-call no-shows. Anyway, is that okay? So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing I want to talk about, and, it, and it's related, is that normally my teaching and uh, consulting schedule is from 10 o'clock Eastern now space or Eastern Standard now space. I'm in Michigan, so that's Eastern uh, time zone. In the fiction, that's what we would call it, until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's been that way for six years. That's been my hours of operation. If you're coming to me, I do make that clear to you. 
But those are the hours of operation, and if you want a consultation with me, I will schedule you to the best of my ability somewhere within those buoys. Not outside of them, within them. Because if you're coming to me to learn something, you want something from me, then you would necessarily have to agree to the terms and conditions of that contract, of those buoys, those boundaries. You'd have to honor them. It's just like going to a supermarket. Say, oh, well, I want some food for my family. Let's see, the supermarket is open from 9 in the morning until 9 at night. But, oh, guess what? You know, I, I need uh, 13 hours of sleep, and I can only sleep from 9 to 9, so I have to go to the store outside of those hours. But the store is not open. Would you go and ask that store to stay open another couple hours to accommodate your sleep schedule? Does that make sense, folks? <laughs> Probably not. So, that's another thing that some folks, not very many, I can say less than five, actually, I can say for sure that one individual has pretty much wanted me to go outside of that schedule, even though they said, at first, oh, well, yeah, I can make it at this time, or I can make it at that time. And then at the last minute, they changed their mind after I had the consultation scheduled. They said, no, I, I can't make it. Can we schedule it another time? Okay. Then I go to schedule it another time. And then they tell me, well, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I can't really make any of those times. We have to schedule it outside of that time. Or... Could you schedule it outside of that time? Or they implied they're such, you know what I mean? Keep the grocery store thing in mind, the example I used. Now, if I know you, if we've already had a consultation, perhaps we've already done a workshop. And then you say, you know what? I can't really do that three to uh, 10 to three thing. Is there any way we could do it on the weekend or something like that? If I already know you and we have a trust count, well, of course, I will try to make an exception from you, for you, if you absolutely cannot work within the boundaries I've set. That's called grace. But if I don't know you, you've never contracted, why would you ask me to change my terms and conditions to accommodate you? Is there something special about you that separates you from everybody else that gives you special treatment? Is that what you want? You want special treatment? Well, with rule one, rule equal, that is not the case. Will not happen. At least if we're strangers. It's got to start off equal. Otherwise, and this is, I found this to be true. Otherwise, if I were to make an exception for you at that point, then that just precipitates you be asking me to make exceptions for you the rest of the time we contract. I found this to be true. And if you think about it, folks, in your own lives, and your own contracts, I think you'll find the same thing to be true. What is the saying? Give someone an inch and they'll take you a mile. Third thing I was going to talk about. YouTube sent me a notice saying that a video that I had had been set to unlisted because the source video that I used or source material of the video that I used had been taken down or something or it had been set to unlisted. And I'm like, what, what video is that? And I looked, I clicked on it, and it was actually the making, it was from a channel called Making Life Brighter. Some of you may know is run by a woman named Winifred Adams, who, to the best of my knowledge, maintains sort of a business or a friendly relationship with Cole and Russell hyphen J. Cole and Cool. And she's fairly active on social media. Interesting, 
I looked at her channel because of this email notification I got from YouTube. I went to her channel and looked at it, looked through the titles of the videos. I noticed she started putting her adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun uh, titles in uh, quotations, which I'm sure. If you notice on my channel, I've been doing that for years. If I'm going to use an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, battle title, I will put it in quotations normally, usually in my short section. So I'm glad to see that Winifred watches me because there was a point where she started doing that where she hadn't done it before. Although her attempts at quantum gobbledygook are still as uh, horrendous as ever, <laughs> the door is still open if she wants to learn. She's more than welcome to contact me via email. I've actually had folks contact me via email on behalf of her because of legal situations she was going through. Uh, they asked if I would help her. And my response, my coolion is always, I don't speak to Aaron boys. If she wants to contact me, she can. She's more than welcome to. Just like everybody else. Like I said about the other individual about the scheduling thing, it's rule one, rule equal. I treat everybody the same. I don't give anyone special treatment. So she's more than welcome to contact me. Anyways, back to the video that got taken down or unlisted or whatever. The title of my video, which was a short, was me basically looking at one of her posts where she was promoting an interview with Sergeant Robert Leroy Horton. And it was from last year, I think about a year ago, last year. And uh, she sounded pretty excited. She was promoting, oh, Sergeant Robert Horton's going to be on the blah, 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 blah. And talking about Russell J. Gould and this and that. <laughs> and I had put a comment on there saying, what happened to tra uh, colon trashy hyphen bitch? Question mark, you know. Because Russell J. Gould put forth a, uh, a document allegedly demoting Sergeant Robert Horton to trashy hyphen bitch Robert Horton. And they had severed ties and were no longer doing business together. Because from my understanding, Robert Horton ran security for Russell. And actually, you can go back in some of my videos. I actually shared this with you. If you go back and look, I show the communications that Robert sent me and my communications back because he wanted me at one time to vet and look over the Syntax Learning Center, I think they're called now, if they haven't changed their name yet again. He wanted me to look over their curriculum. Um, <laughs> focusing specifically on Joey John Lester uh, wanted me to look over what he had created. And he just wanted me to do it out of the goodness of my own heart. Which, my experience with those folks, Syntax Learning Center, Quantum Community, Red Thumb Club, whatever you want to call them, is that they would write me emails, ask me grammar questions. I, of course, would answer them in the confidential. And then <laughs> they would never mention my name that they had spoken to me, but yet they would share the information that I taught them. And they would share it as if they came up with it. I have proof of that in some of those videos that I've shared with you over the years. It's not a big deal. The big deal is that they continue to slander me in the public. On the one hand, they're asking for my help. On the other hand, they're slandering me. But, you know, that's just the kind of folks they are. That's their MO. So that's what that video was about. It got set to unlisted. And I think the name of the video was Evidence of the Bipolarity, meaning bipolar, meaning on the one hand, you're saying this Ro Sergeant Robert Horton is a trashy hyphen bitch, and on the other hand, now all of a sudden, you're having him on your show? <laughs> a 
which I don't know if that ever happened or not. I don't know if he came on or what happened. Um, but I just thought that was very interesting. Of course, I saved the email. I save all my emails, folks, for continuance of the evidence. I highly recommend you doing the same. That's why I never, ever, ever put anything in an email, even though it says confidential, I never put anything in an email that I wouldn't want in the public. Ever. Ever, ever. That's why you never... There, there's lots of folks that email me and they talk to me like, uh, like we're buddies. I used to get a lot of that from the Red Thumb Club. Like they would talk to me like we're bros, but we're not bros, bro. I don't know you. And I don't move that way. I move different than those people. Way different. And I'm, at one time, I wanted to work with Russell J. Gould back in 2019-ish. I wanted to be a part of that. I could see the errors in the grammar, which I've repeatedly brought to the public. You can look at my Coral Blade Grotto broadcast for evidence of that. I knew there were errors there, but I felt that, wow, you know, if I could work with Russell, I could get into that construct and correct the errors from the inside out. You know, that old chestnut. But I'm so glad it never happened. So glad that uh, the numerous times that we tried to get in contact and do a video chat or a phone chat, he never showed up. Or he would say he was going to call me or contact me, and he never did. And after that happened so many times, I was just like, screw it. Too inconsistent, too chaotic for me. No, thank you. I'm not going to try and force the issue. Thank goodness I didn't end up working in that capacity or with him or anything like that. Now that I can see him and his people and his construct for what, what it really is. As for what it really is, I'm not going to say. I'll leave it up to you. I'm not going to tell other people what to think. I'm certainly not going I'm just going to say that they don't use correct grammar. And I've proven it. And I've also showed them how to fix it. I've also shown them how to fix their errors. But it's not up to me to force anyone to stop and correct. Ever. You can't force someone to stop and correct. The only time that happens is if someone is, if you, if you are in imminent danger, and I'll give the best example of this would be, the only time I would force someone to stop and correct is if, for example, I was going to my car in the parking lot of a grocery store, and someone tried to physically attack me and rob me, I would definitely stop and correct them there, or I would do my best to stop and correct them. First, I would force them to stop, put them on the ground, and then I would correct them with a couple soccer kicks, probably. That's the only time. Other than that, as far as grammar goes, it's just words, folks. And in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, coercion is not correct psychology. Everyone has a choice. Contract is by consent. If you see someone trying to coerce someone into stopping correcting their grammar, that's fiction system BS. That's bully behavior. And that's what I'll say about that. Appreciate you listening. And I'm going to put this in the members section so the members can listen to it unedited as, as much as they want to. Uh, but then I'm going to edit it into a more cognizable form, more pal palatable, yeah, palatable form, and then put it out in the public. Appreciate you. Uh -huh.